Okay, I have here a uh, piece of mesquite. I started turning on the lathe and I'm in the hollowing process right now. Uh, I'm using the Jameson system, which consists of the uh, cutter, the bar, and the bar and the, the support here for it. And basically it's, it's got a laser and you, s you start off by setting the laser to your tip of your blade to know how far. I want to set about a quarter of an inch between the blade. I want the thickness of the wall to be about a quarter inch on this project right here. The reason why I say is because you see, um, you'll see on here there's a pretty bad spot here with some bark that goes all the way through so it's going to wind up being a hole in here before it's over. But anyway, I get my laser and you can adjust it by loosening it up and turning it and I use a card with a line through it set at a quarter inch and so I'm going to adjust that to give me my quarter inch and tighten it down and that's going to be my thickness guide okay so what I'm going to do I'll start working it down and cutting it and you'll see the little red dot I mean, you can see the real little red dot on the video here uh, I'll just keep working it down till I get to where the the little red dot just gets real narrow to the side that means I'm getting almost to the quarter inch mark of where I got it set at and when it falls off or you see just barely dot right over here but most of the dot is actually below it that means I'm I'm a true quarter inch away from where or wherever I said if I want a half inch I set it at half inch space but right now I got a quarter inch so right here I'm a quarter inch thick on the shell on the wall thickness so that's where I want and I just keep working all the way down till I get the whole thing all the way down to the end of where I want it anyway that's basically how the Jameson system works and it works really 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 good so I'm going to turn the lathe on and I'll show you a little demonstration of how it works. Okay, for this project here, I'm going to set my RPMs and I'm going up to, I got about 960 RPMs for this project here, which is pretty good speed, especially when you got hollow spots in the metal. Of course, the bigger it is, the less RPMs, and the more unbalanced it is, the less RPMs you can actually run. This one here is going to have a hollow spot, and it's going to end up having uh, actually holes in the whole side here before it's over with, uh, because of the bad place in the wood. So, anyway, I'm going to start off, I'm going to just work my way down. You see I'm where I'm at there, I'm, there I'm, I'm actually cutting wood, but I'm at the very end. Or where the light is falling off. The laser. Just take it real slow. If you go too fast, you get a lot of vibration. And another thing, the bar here, this is a three quarter inch bar here uh, for a shallower project. You start getting the bigger, deeper projects. I've also got another bar that's a one inch thick bar, and that'll help keep the vibration down because the deeper you go, the more vibration. You're going to get because your sport bar is here and the deeper you go the thicker the bar you're going to need to keep the vibration down you get too much vibration and your uh, lasers start moving around a lot and you can actually wind up breaking uh, fences of hollow you can wind up breaking the thing loose now if you notice i don't use a chuck i use a face plate i've got a six inch face plate it's aluminum and i put a lot of screws in it uh, and the one piece here, I don't use a glue block normally on this either, it's all one piece, uh, I just allow extra, the screws are going to go in so far, I allow extra and I'll end up putting it off uh, when I'm through with the project. It makes it more solid because when you're doing something like this here, especially when you got hollow spots, it can take a beating, so it's just a lot more strength. Using a uh, chuck to me is, uh, you can end up, I've had it, I've used them before, uh, you wind up getting a little bit of rust spot like that and it break loose and fly off and it's going to hurt you. So I don't trust the uh, chucks for something like this. I, I want the uh, solid support. 
see here, I'm just starting to cut. And you can see the laser, that's where I'm at. I'm actually right in, right in this spot here. Just take it easy and slow and work your way down. And I just keep I cut a little bit and I move in. I usually work my way down for an inch or two. Then I, I pull back. And I cut it. I just don't stay. In years past, I used I didn't have a laser. I didn't have the bar. I used the hand hand chisel, and you can only go down so far with a hand chisel without it just being too much vibration due to the length and just not enough support. But I would do it. I'd have to stop every minute or two. I'd cut a little bit and then stop and use calipers to measure. That's the old way, which is a great way. That's the way I learned. But uh, with the Jameson bar and the laser, it's harder to go wrong. You can still mess up. You can still go too deep. Especially if you get too much vibration and move, you can wind up moving your laser and not know it. And first thing I know, you cut yourself through and you cut this thing into pieces and it will come fly. Uh, I speak them from experience. Okay, you can see I'm starting to get a lot closer to the edge. start getting to the edge, you go down to where it falls off, and you can end up having a, a rough spot in it because it's not going to be perfectly even. So what I do is once I get it to where the laser falls off, and before I go very far to keep support, and then I just I find that edge where I'm at. And then I slowly move back and forth while I'm just taking off just a hair. And you can feel it. It takes a feeling, but you can barely feel it. So I'm just barely taking off anything. I go back and forth so I clean that off. So if there's any rough spots, I just barely go real smooth. And I do it more by feel and not using the laser. Because the laser will actually fall off sometimes. But right there at the edge... And I just barely move back and forth to I could feel and you could feel any bumps inside there by on, by your hand on the bar. And I just move back and forth so I slowly can tell that it's smooth. And that'll keep any rough spots in it, because you can look in there uh, once it's finished, you can look in there with a the light and you can see rough spots if you don't do this. So just very carefully I go back and forth. Now I've already done all this up here. And I don't, you ideally, you don't want to go back and do that because it's pretty thin. And once you start getting thin down here and start cutting up here, you stand a chance to, being as weak, you stand a chance of more of breaking apart. So I try to stay you know, in a small area, pretty close, to be the smooth. And I can slide there ever so easily, go a little bit further. But just to make sure it's smooth, I just barely touch it. Go too too hard, you go through. You can go through, so. and you'll cut gouges. And you don't want the gouges. To, I did it when you when you cut it. You want it just real smooth. As smooth as the outside is, you want the inside also, if possible. So all right, I did that. So I'm gonna go a little bit more deeper. Okay, I'm about as deep as I can get here because as I as I cut over here, then all of a sudden it's going to go. My next spot's going to be because what I do, I do it in stages. I do an inch or two at a time, and then work my way down, and then work my way down, and work my way down. 
all the way down until it gets smooth on the inside. It gives you more support at the base. In case you do get a catch or something like that, it's not going to break it apart. I want to keep it in stages to give them all the support I can as I work myself down. Smooth out that inside. Like I say, as I rub, as I barely rub, you can feel if any bad spots in it, any high spots, or, or any gaps. If you got gouges, you got to go a little bit deeper to make it smooth, or you'll see that gouge inside there. And I don't want that, so I just keep it where I just, as I go through there, I don't feel any high or low spots. It's just very smooth. But you got to do it with a very gentle touch when you're working. With it. You see that laser just falls off. Once I get that, that's when I start working it. And that's when you go by feel. That feels good. Now I come back in here, and you see that now I'm up in here again. I'm gonna work my way down. Anyway, that's the that's the basic process. Once I get down the bottom, the bottom is is the only harder part. And what I do, I drill. I use a drill, drill bit, and I drill down from the center. I drill all the way down and get my depth to the depth I want. So I'm not trying to cut all the way at the center, especially from uh, with this bar here, trying to cut the center all the way out. It's a little bit more difficult to do because it's so far in there. So I use a drill, I get my depth, and what I did, I drilled all the way down using a hand drill. I actually made me a drill using a long drill bit, and I made me a handle. So when I first start, I can drill, and of course, I measure and I make a mark on my drill and I drill down until it gets to the mark that I wanted. And you can see here, this one I drill down to right in here. So I've got a center hole to start off with. So I'm going to drill, I'm going to chisel down using my boring bar. I'm going to go down until I get to the bottom of that hole and that's going to be the depth that I want to stop at. And once you get there, then I mark, mark my way out and then doing the bottom I do it by feel just kind of feeling across watching it and then I'll kind of round the inside out so that the bottom is is flat on the inside and then it starts just making a small little round edge and then follow all the way up here a quarter inch so that's that's really the process and I'll just continue working my way down until I get to that bottom. I say the hardest part is the bottom, just trying to get it as straight as possible. And then at the edge, when you get to the edge, and kind of put just a little bit of a round edge on it, on the inside. Once I get that through, I'm gonna just start at the bottom, wherever I have it marked, and you'll see in red here, that's the waist. I'm gonna, right there, I'm gonna just start cutting it on through. And I cut it off, and then it'll just come right off. And that will be the end of it. And I'm hoping you see here, this is a bad spot here. Uh, when I finish there, this is going to wind up being a, uh, it's going to end up being a hole in here in the finished project. And I will uh, cut away now, and then when I get to the end, I'll stop and I'll show you where that hole is, to show you what the final result is. But uh, even here, you can see I had a worm hole here, and as I cut through the quarter inch, there's going to be a, there's a hole right here. And that's open, and that's per design. Uh, that's just as to the fact, but this here, the effect on this here, is really going to be pretty good looking whenever it's through. It gives it a pretty good appeal to it. Besides just being bad, there will actually be a hole in here. And uh, we'll get to that and I'll show you. Okay, if you look here, I'm now about down in here. In fact, I'll show you. I got a tip. I'm down there toward the bottom right now, which is to me some of the hardest part trying to get down to the bottom, trying to square off the bottom. Uh, being also careful. I know this is the where I end. I want to, I'm gonna end up being cutting, 
so uh, I want to stop right around in here just leave a little bit where I can cut off and still have a thick enough bottom there where it's not going to break off as I cut because usually when I cut I cut off at a little bit of a taper going in so that just to make sure the the bottom is not having a rounded edge so that a rock I want to cut just a little bit of a taper going in concave so that uh, as it goes in the outside will sit flush with the base as a base onto a uh, uh, whatever you can put it on or with a table whatever but that way they keep any wobble out of it so I always want just a little bit of a rounded concave shape to it uh, and each to his own you can make it flat as possible but flat you could wind up having a convex and and you don't want the thing rocking so anyway uh, I'm going to end up cutting like I say you see this is where the end of the tip is right here I got just a little bit more then I'm going to start flattening it out and then rounding it so I'm already here now if you notice something uh, as we talked about earlier uh, I got a quarter inch thickness all the way around and if you look at this here with this bark uh, this uh, mesquite here and it had some disfigured into it uh, to me it adds to the uh, to the style of it to me it gives a little bit of texture but you see there's a hole through here okay you see here where there's a hole through there and a hole in here and I put the light in here to shine and you can see uh, there's a hole there's some worm holes here but this is just where the uh, where some of the bark was from the outside of the tree uh, the tree was pretty disfigured whenever I got it, uh, the trunk on it, in fact it was rounded off, it was pretty big around, uh, probably about 20, 22 inches in diameter when I got it, but it was kind of a U-shaped. In order to make it straight, I went to having to go down right now, it's probably about uh, 7, 8 inches in diameter, and then, uh, and I had, in order to get the shape uh, from the diameter going down, uh, it can only be so long. That's why there's so much waste here. I want to get it down to the shape that I wanted and taper down that I wanted, and this is about where I want to end. So I got some waste here, which is kind of a waste of that amount. It's a lot more than what I originally intended. But uh, the one, the shape I wanted, this is where I wanted to end. It's got some beautiful, beautiful grain in it. And uh, as it's finished, as you see, it's just got some beautiful figure in it. So. Uh, got a bad place here that was kind of thin. I wound up putting a little bit of super glue there to hold that out because that was there you can actually move it. So I put some super glue in there to just kind of make sure that stays and holds. Other than that, this here is all just natural and there's no glue holding it together and it's some places it's pretty thin. And that's the really the probably the main reason I chose to go a quarter inch thick on this one here. I've had had some bigger projects that had a lot more hole in it and I mean one whole side having a hole and when I did that I went more closer to a three eighths to a half inch thick and if there's no bad places in it at all I've gone down uh, as low as uh, say an eighth inch uh, thickness because I like the thinner myself better but being this here I don't want it to come apart uh, quarter inch is about ideal what I was really wanting for the effect of this here uh, I like them kind of light, lightweight with a little bit heavier bottom to it uh, so Anyway, uh, we'll get started. We'll go down and get toward the uh, bottom, and I'll show you how I do the bottom. But uh, you'll see the laser just going across, uh, try to get as flat as possible, and get up here and start rounding it off. I'm going to bring it on up to. Uh, I've been running right now. Once I got it hollowed out uh, where that bad place is, because anything more than 900 RPM, it would start shaking a little bit. Uh, but now that I got that where that hoe is and all, it's, uh, it's a little bit more uh, evened out on weight distribution. So I'm able to get lower th about 1,000, uh, 1050 right now. There's no vibration. Uh, the faster it is, kind of the better, especially as you're cutting on the inside where the bad places is or hollow spots. There's less chatter uh, the faster you go. Uh, so. There's no, I don't really go by a rule of thumb on how fast. I usually get it as fairly uh, the speed, as fast as I can get it, where I get a good smooth cut on it. And yet, uh, if it flies apart, it's not going to really hurt you so bad. So, actually, for this size base, 1,000 RPMs, 1050 is pretty good. So.
If you remember I told you I, I used the drill bit, I went down to the bottom. I'm right now, uh, when I look inside, I am really right on the, the end of where my drill bit went. So that means I got the depth pretty much where I want to go. And that just makes it easy because once you're trying to start cut the bottom off, it gets a little bit harder, especially with this carbide tip cutter I'm using. It don't really cut good in front of the uh, on the front side. Cuts good on the side, but not necessarily on the front. Uh, I do have a cutter that will go out and cut more on the front, but I think I pretty much with using the drill bit, I get as deep as I want without having to uh, go forward. I can just cut sideways. So. Clean it side up. And then just really just sort of gently. I'm going to clean that edge up. I'll make sure it's, it's smooth. And it's all by finger dip and curl. So I'm getting close to the edge over here with my laser. So no, now I will just now is when I want to start tapering off and getting around. And it's not necessarily using as much laser as it is. You watch your laser to make sure you don't go too far, but you just go by feel. And you just got you got to feel that edge and just kind of round it off just by feel. And you just got to feel close with your fingers if you can feel it. And I've just about got it about where I want it. I just want to make sure to clean that bottom up, clean that side up a little bit, side wall. There's no way to really get your hand inside to do sanding to make it smooth. So it's all got to be done by the chisel. And that's why you just go real slow along that wall and just keep it. And then there should be no sanding needed if you do it that way. Okay, I stopped for a minute. I looked inside with the flashlight, I vacuumed it all out on the inside, all the sawdust, and I saw just a little bit where I drilled, I saw just a little bit of a dimple. Probably got about another eighth, a quarter inch dimple inside there for just from the point of the drill bit. So I'm going to take, the, uh, uh, and I had to adjust my bit a little bit because it was just a little bit off center, so it wouldn't ever catch you good. So I adjusted it, uh, my tool rest, where it was right in the center on the baseline and I better feel that little dimple and go ahead and start cleaning that out and then round it up and then the bottom's through. So I'm going to clean that up real quick. And you'll be able to tell about where the center's at with the laser, but remember it's always off about a quarter of an inch so from the center. So I'm just going there to feel that dimple. Again, this, this bit here, on the end of it, this carbide bit, it's just a round disc. Uh, it don't cook good in the front, just the way it's designed. It's got a little bit of taper to it, so it's hard to clean up that bottom with that. But I'm going to get it and stop it and look inside now and see what it looks like. And the depot uh, from the drill bit, pretty much gone. The bottom, the bottom in there is pretty flat and then it starts coming up a little bit of taper on the side. So I think I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, I think I'm happy with it where it's at. So basically that's it. And another thing, you can go ahead and once you do that, you can start doing these sanding if you need to do. Uh, this one here, I use the, uh, uh, with the chisel I use, there's really no sanding needed because I was able to use the Ellsworth uh, uh, 
pretty good where it's at without doing any real sanding. So it's pretty smooth. I might touch up a little bit of sandpaper, but uh, it's about ready to uh, kind of clean it up a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, I'm through with the inside now. I'm ready to go ahead and I got everything sanded down, ready to go. All this is, uh, looks pretty good the way I want it. Uh, like I said, if you use a good, uh, the right tool, you'll have a glass smooth without having to do a lot of sanding. So uh, you can touch up with sandpaper as you want, or if you use a, a rougher tool, you just have to do a lot more sanding on it to spend a lot more time. But uh, I like the, whether you use the uh, Ellsworth uh, bow gouge, or Ellsworth gouge and go ahead and uh, get it glass smooth as much as I can. So what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to come over here with the red and go ahead and start cutting it off. Uh, bend I'm going to be cutting over here and I got all this hanging out over here. It's not real heavy, but I want to make sure I support it well uh, just in case because I don't want it to fly apart. Now's the time that I'm finishing up. I don't want to wind up tearing it up. So. Uh, I'm going to come over here. I got to put my tailstock back on. I got a big cone uh, tailstock, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up there. And uh, I don't have to go real tight with it, but just kind of snug it up a little bit, and that'll give us some support, uh, keep any kind of wobble out of it while I'm cutting over here. I'm going to start off uh, cutting it uh, here uh, with a wider cut. And go down, go down some, and then start using a uh, narrow parting tool to cut it. But I'm gonna start off. I got a big, uh, the Easy Wood tools. Uh, I got the Mark, uh, the the David Mark series. Uh, I like it because it's got just a, a prettier handle. It's got a little bit bigger handle. I love the shape of this handle here too. Uh, it gives you a lot of support. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here using this. Is just uh, this is the roughing gouge. Uh, I guess the easy rougher, what they call it, it's carbide tip, so you don't have to worry about doing much sharpening with it, even though I, I do sharpen it with a diamond blade on a uh, different tool uh, if you need to, but you just keep turning the blade if it ever gets dull to the next side, and so it's very rare you would have to, ever have to sharpen it. But anyway, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to go ahead and just start uh, getting a wider cut, uh, getting it on down the shape, and so that way I can shape the bottom a little bit one, and then I use a parting tool to cut it off completely. So I'm going to go and get that started. Just remember to go fairly slow with it because you don't want to get in this stage and wind up tearing it up. So just kind of go slow with it. Okay, I've got it down about as far as I want to go with this tool here because it makes a pretty wide cut and a rough cut and like I say, I sure don't want to lose it at this point of the game. So I'm going to stop and go ahead and go to a parting tool. Okay, like I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with the parting tool. Uh, this is a wider parting tool here and then I'm going to end up, before I cut it off, go to a uh, very narrow parting tool. Uh, main thing is to be careful when you get starting to get close to the very end and it starts getting wobbly. Uh, I don't want that thing flying off so I will actually back off the tailstock and uh, kind of hold it in my hand lightly as it turns and catch it so that if it falls off it's not going to fly off somewhere. But anyway I'm going to start off by cutting it with the smaller parting tool and I'm going to kind of angle in a little bit because like I said I want a little bit of a concave to it. So uh, I don't do it at the very end. I move, I move in about a quarter to uh, three-eighths of an inch 
and then start tapering it in just every little bit of so slightly. Don't want to go too much, you get into the bottom and cut through the bottom. Sure don't want to do that this the point of the stage. So. Uh, Okay, this is kind of where it starts getting dangerous. You start getting too close. Like I said, it flies off. I'm supported here, but if I take it too much off here, wobble, it's going to wind up catching. And uh, when it start cutting through or if it breaks through, it's going to grab it and it's going to want to throw it. And so well, I, I'm going to go just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and take the tail stock, remove it, where get it out of my way. And then uh, from there, I go ahead and uh, hold it by hand. But I'm going to cut a little bit more away. This tool here, it uh, works pretty good. It's very thin, but it does have a, uh, it does kind of bend a little bit. You just got to go slow with it. And I want it smooth as possible on the bottom. So, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and support it with my hand. Now I'm going to stop it first though because if I get turned and remove it there's so little here and with the weight of this here I'm scared it's going to break it off. So I don't necessarily want to cut all the way through there. If I want to cut most of the way I could cut it off and then sand the bottom down smooth. Okay I'm going to go ahead and start it back up again. I'm going to, I've got uh, some leather gloves just to keep them burning and I can get a better hand. But I'm going to kind of hold it in one hand while I do some more cutting. I'm not going to cut, try to cut all the way through. I'm going to cut it to where it starts getting pretty loose, and then I'll wind up stopping it and cutting the rest of the way. But just in case, if I go too far and it breaks, uh, and if it's too thin on the bottom, you try to break, you might break, you might break through the bottom too. I don't want to do that. So ideally, I don't want to cut all the way through and try to break it loose because of it. That some of that grain is going to wind up trying to break, and if it's thin enough. It could actually tear the bottom out of this. I don't want to do that either. So what I'm going to do is just kind of support the one hand. I'm going to cut down low enough where I can cut it by hand with a little hand saw and then sand that down smooth. But I'm going to go a little bit further anyway. And I don't necessarily want to go too fast with it. Um, where I was cutting 1,000 RPMs before, I don't want to go too fast. Uh, so I'm going to slow it down. I'm about 675. Now I'm going to just cut a little bit. And like I said, I'm supporting it with my hand. When it first starts feeling wobbly, I'm going to stop. And I think I'm getting pretty doggone close to where I want to be. Yeah, it's getting pretty wobbly. It's starting to I feel a wobble to it. So I'm going to stop it right here. I, some people would get it and just break it off. But like I said, if it's thin enough on the bottom, you go to break it, and you might break the bottom off. So I don't want to do that. I want to cut it. So that's really it. That's through. I'm going to finish it up. Uh, and we'll get a picture of it finished whenever we're... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spray lacquer. And what I usually do is... Uh, uh, after it's ready, I go ahead and start spraying lacquer. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much through with this here. I cut it off, uh, sand the bottom down where it's smooth on the bottom, and generally my uh, choice is using lacquer. I use a spray lacquer. I spray it. I spray multiple coats on it, sand it down smooth, spray more. Uh, that gives you a glass finish. Uh, ben just has a rough edge here. This is, uh, this is more of a rougher vessel. I'd probably go ahead and use more like a uh, semi-gloss or even just a satin, probably a satin finish on this here. Makes it look a little bit more rustic, especially with the, uh, the bad spots in it anyway. If you put the glass smooth finish on something like this here and with the bad spots, it just don't, to me, look as good. So I'll probably put a satin finish on this here.